After the aurora borealis dazzled the night sky back in early May, in which much of the country got a good glimpse of the northern lights, you often see northern lights pictures popping on social media all the time. So if you feel like it's been happening more often than usual, you're not exactly wrong. You see, the sun goes in solar cycles, 11 year cycles, and we are approaching the solar maximum, which is actually in late 2024 to early 2026. And so that could mean that we could be seeing more of the Northern Lights. Let me dive in a little deeper to the science here. The Aurora Borealis is a product of geomagnetic storms, which occur more often during solar maximum. If we wanna get really nerdy here, Coronal mass ejections, or also known as CMEs, are charged particles, which are really a major cause of geomagnetic storms. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of science at you, but I just need you to bear with me. So the planetary K index, also known as KP, is used to characterize the magnitude of these disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field and is used by the Space Weather Prediction Center when forecasting geomagnetic storms. So enough of the science jargon. What does the KP index and G scale mean for your viewing? All right, so the KP index and G storm values are essentially measurements that communicate how far south the northern lights may be seen and how strong the overall solar storm is. KP ranges from zero to nine and G storm values range from one to five. For the Aurora Borealis to be seen in the UP, KP values will typically be at least KP4, but even that is still too weak to be considered a solar storm. So the dominant color in that area would probably be green, but you'll probably most likely see most of that through photography. KP5 is visible as far south as Cadillac, Houghton Lake, or West Branch. KP6, visible as far south as probably the Lansing area. And then KP7, well, that's when the aurora will be visible over much of Michigan and possibly as far south as northern Indiana and the northern part of Ohio. Now when we're talking KP8 and KP9, these are rare events that make the northern lights visible even farther south and are considered rare G4 and G5 storms. The early May 2024 event was a rare G5 solar storm. So now that you may feel a bit more confident with the KP index, don't let it fool you when it comes to Aurora chasing or hunting because you can't solely rely on it. That's because the KP index is observations of a three hour window. And in reality, when it comes to the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, there are quick sporadic shows that could be one to two minutes within that three hour window. Not to mention it has to be dark out. We're not even talking about weather related events when it comes to the cloud cover or if there are showers in the area, all of that. So there are a lot of ingredients that go with it. And then it comes down to the human eye. So the human eye actually has lower visibility at night. It's just not as great when it comes to being able to see the Northern Lights. Your phone, however, has multiple different camera lenses with longer exposure. Um, and so it captures the Northern Lights better than the naked eye. So some of those photos that you see swirling on the internet might not have been seen with the naked eye, which makes it even harder to capture and to know what you're looking for in the night sky. When it comes to aurora forecasting, it's not a perfect science. So to ask what is the best time to view, it's almost an impossible question to answer. I'm forewarned meteorologist, Ashley Barrissey.